If you're looking for somebody who knows their JavaScript really well, here I am. Um, OK, so our story begins with you've got an idea for a new side project. And it's going to be awesome. You're on the train. You're walking home. You're really excited to get the coding. And then you're like, OK, so I've got the idea. All I need to do is set up the authorization. I need to choose a database. I need to model the data to make reads and writes as fast as possible. I need to implement the REST or GraphQL endpoint to communicate with the server. I need to set up a WebSocket so that the server can push new data to the client as soon as it's received, host the application, and then, because we're fancy, utilize browser caching and offline capabilities to increase performance. OK, this is a lot of stuff. This is all the stuff that needs to be done before we can even start doing the key features of the app. So for example, let's say we, we have an idea for a revolutionary uh, messaging app. All of this stuff would have to be done. When you're working 40 or 50 hours a week, when we've got family and friends, it's hard to find time to side project to begin with. So enter any, sorry. Too, too early. So that's a lot of work. And you might start feeling like this. Enter Firebase. Firebase is a backend as a service by Google. And it does all of those things that I was mentioning um, really powerfully and honestly better than I would ever be able to do them myself. And Firebase, uh, it basically allows developers to focus on the key features of their apps that actually matter to them and that are going to help them actually follow through with their side project. Because how many of us have started a side project, it's on our GitHub, and it's like halfway finished? You know, it, it doesn't look very good. So the uh, Firebase comes with a variety of different features. And the ones that I'm going to be demonstrating for you today are real, uh, the, the real-time database, authentication, and hosting. And so to prove my point about how Firebase can up your side project game, I am actually going to do something really risky, which is live code in front of you all. Um, so can you see the screen? So I'm going to create a Firebase application for you in front of your eyes from scratch um, and do it in less than uh, 10 or 15 minutes just to show you exactly how fast. So to make this live coding um, as painless as possible for everybody involved, I have created everything I've possibly needed on the client. So I'm literally just going to drop in the Firebase uh, functions. So it starts with adding a project on Firebase in the Firebase console from Google. takes a little bit of a second. So this is going to lead us to our dashboard. And then our dashboard will, sh will show us, I'm going to call it chat it up. The internet connection is a little slower in here than it was at home. So this will lead us to our uh, Firebase console, which will show us all of the features that we can use through Firebase. And what we're going to start with is authorization so that um, Yes, so when you're starting a new project, you basically just you choose which platform you want. And Firebase can work with web. It can work with iOS, Android, Unity, C++, Java, like so many cool things. Um, JavaScript is just one of the many things that can work with Firebase. OK, so you go to your project, create a Firebase app, uh, Firebase, <coughs> paste in the code. And so I've npm installed Firebase. So we install Firebase. I'm also, oh, it's those things that will get you when you're live coding. So and then I'm also going to um, import the database so I don't forget it later. And then basically, so we've got our configuration file. We've initialized it here. And then we're just going to export the parts of Firebase that we need. So in this case, we need authorization. So in this case, it's just authorization. Save that. And now we essentially have um, all the authorization that we can need. And so I like to use observables um, to deal with my asynchronous code. So ignore all of this code. And let's just focus on, so I'm importing the auth that I got from my Firebase file. And uh, Firebase has a really awesome function, which is just auth.createUser with email and password. You've got an input, input form. You pass it the values from the input form. I'm doing a promise.resolve as a placeholder here. And if I replace that with a request to a network, then what we should get here is I should now actually be able to sign in with a username and a password. So that'll reload. My other, yeah, so all right, tray at gmail.com. 
with a password, sign up, and that should have worked. And we can check that it works by going to the Firebase console. Um, oh, OK. So the other thing that we need to do when, uh, yes, OK. So in Firebase has a variety of different ways that a user can sign in. You can do Twitter, Facebook, Google. No more like messing around with Passport, which is always annoying. So you enable what you want to do, save it, refresh this. Sign in, and then we should see, yep, so there's that user that I just created. And so the UI here has redirected us back to the messages. So the user messages can add, 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 awesome, except they're just being persisted in my local state in Redux. If I refresh the client, I can see that um, uh, the, the messages are gone, and it thinks that we're no longer logged in. So if we go back to our code, um, so this is my app.js file, and I'm importing the auth and database functions that I exported from my Firebase file. And so all I'm going to do, um, a really awesome thing about Firebase is you can set up observables in your app that basically whenever a change happens in Firebase, it will automatically push that notification to your client, So um, especially with, uh, with authorization. So it'll persist uh, the session for a user for any specific client. So when I save that and go back, yeah, so it's redirected us back to this messages page. All right, and so now, um, so for the messages, so for the database, there are two kinds of databases. There's the Firestore and the real-time database. I'm a huge fan of the Firestore. It has an amazing data model. Um, you could have millions of documents in your collections, and it fetches the data really, really fast. It's really cool. Um, so we're going to use the Firestore today to persist these messages here. So we have these messages. They're being sent to the client. And they're being persisted in state, but they're not actually being persisted on any database. And so. In my messages epic, I'm going to import the database. And then this function here. So the way that we uh, interact with the Firestore is we name the collect. It's very similar to a NoSQL database in that we name the collection. And then we set the uh, ID for the doc. And then we set the message of the document. So if I replace this promise.resolve, with a request to the network, then when this refreshes, these should actually now all be persisted. And you saw that little loading thing in the icon? That means that we received a success message from, from Firebase. And actually, if we refresh this right here, we'll see those messages populate in our server, uh, populate in our Firebase console. So everything here. And they'll actually start to populate live if uh, we keep refreshing, which is really cool. Like you see things live update to the server. Boop, boop, boom. And then next up, I'm going to show you my absolute favorite part of Firebase. So yeah, so if we refresh this, we can see that none of our messages are there. And that's because we're writing to the database, but we're not reading. So. Uh, Setting up a WebSocket, if you've ever done it, is really annoying. There's a lot of things to take into consideration. Um, with Firebase, it's, it can be as short as one line of code. So here, back in my app.js file, I've imported the database. And I'm going to set up a subscriber to, our, to the Firestore database so that whenever a change happens, it's automatically pushed to the client. And so here, I name the collection that I want to query. I order it by timestamp, so it's always in chronological order. And then I get the query snapshot from the database and then just pass that to a Redux action. So now if we go back, when this reloads, all of our messages should be there. Boom. And did you see how fast that was? That was actually a network request. Like the latency of Firebase it impresses me. And this is not a production level app. If you've ever used it in production, the speed is still really impressive. Um, so yeah, so we've got all that. So now what I've just demonstrated to you with like a couple functions is uh, authentication, um, setting up a, a being able to write to a database, and being able to uh, get push notifications from the server whenever there's new, um, whenever there's new uh, data. And so what I'm going to do now 
is actually open up an incognito window here, go to localhost where we won't be signed in, sign in. So this is a totally different window. And look, oh my god. <laughs> hey, what's up? Did you see that? That was instant from the database. Not about you. Oops. Bam! Just like that. Just giving a talk on Firebase. So like, I am blown away by things like this. That's why I'm a dork. That's why I became a developer. Um, and so basically, the key features of, the, of my side project would be all of these, like the rich UI and building out features that you know, if an employer or whoever's using the app is going to use are actually going to care about. Firebase just makes it really, really easy to, to focus on those features and to not have to worry about maintaining a database or writing efficient um, queries uh, or data modeling or setting up a WebSocket. Um, and so that's what I love about Firebase. And so, uh, and so the other thing is hosting. Um, and so HTTPS is really important right now, uh, you, uh, better security, and it, it offers a lot more that you can do with your application. And so uh, I just want to quickly demonstrate hosting with Firebase as well. So hosting is super, super easy. I did this for the first time today, actually. I hosted my app, and I was really blown away by exactly how. So I've already done that. I'm already logged in. So I'm going to initialize my app here. There it is. OK, that was it. Like, I deployed it, and then I just do Firebase deploy. And then it's deployed on an HTTPS server. Amazing. So that does that. It's uploading. Um, I, I used to use Heroku. Never again. Uh, so finish that. And then so it gave me a URL to go visit my app. And if all goes well, that means that I will successfully have live coded in front of all of you. Yeah, there's my app. Awesome. OK, yeah, and that's Firebase. I mean, it's just a really awesome way to get started um, with your side projects. If you have an idea, I highly recommend it. It's also amazing for use in production, too. Um, it's uh, really taking storm at companies. I know a friend of mine at Vimeo is using it on some of his projects. Um, yeah, Firebase is cool. Yeah. So just a quick question. Thank you so much for the demo. Super awesome um, to see. Um, I started using Firebase uh, a while ago, and I absolutely love it. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that I'm trying to do is actually weave it into work at my company. Uh, mm -hmm. We're a pretty big comp uh, company. And um, I'm just hoping for use cases and things like that. Can you suggest anything that you've seen clients use it for, or areas that you can see kind of quick demos of projects to show people Mm -hmm. Well, uh, if you're struggling at all with maintaining your database, like if you find that your reads and writes are getting really slow, um, that's a really good place for Firebase. They, uh, you know, the way that they've architected their data model is is incredible. You could have a million documents in one collection um, and just need to find three of them with a certain ID, and it's basically as fast as if there were five documents in that collection. Um, that's a really good use case. Uh, it's basically for if there's any new project at all where you just need to get something up and off the ground running really quickly. Um, I find it very similar to if you need a style framework because sometimes you, you don't want to spend time writing the CSS. You'd rather just have it done for you. And it's the same for Firebase. If there's anything that would make your life easier with just having hosting authentication, real-time database, data modeling done for you, then that's a great use case. So this is technically a server with this app, correct? Yeah. Um, and have you used other ones such like, as GraphQL? What would you say that is the benefit of this versus something else? 
So Firebase, um, there are a lot of great serverless things about it, such as um, like being able to just query directly to Firebase. However, there are a lot of things that are also, it, like the client is not the only key feature that you'll be able to focus on by using Firebase. For example, if you want to do some data science or some other things on your back end, um, such as a chatbot or basically anything other than the monotonous tasks that are done on the server, then that's totally, like I, for example, use a GraphQL endpoint on my side project in addition to my um, Firebase. I just personally don't want to spend time doing the data modeling and setting up a WebSocket, but I do however want to use Python to crunch my data. So um, it's really good for just uh, taking care of those monotonous tasks of a server. Thank you. Thanks so much, Ray.